um, eight days into camp. Uh, I think we've been progressing nicely. Uh, scrimmage number one uh, this evening. It'll be a great opportunity to get out on the field without the coaches there and you know let the kids play and compete. And, uh, awesome opportunity to evaluate. Any questions? Get a mic to you. Please raise your hand. <coughs> Coach, you mentioned eight days in. Uh, where would you kind of assess where your starting quarterback competition is? I think it's progressing nicely. And I think the, uh, the battle has uh, elevated uh, the urgency and the, and the execution of the entire unit. Uh, you know, and, you know, we grade, every, grade and uh, evaluate every snap uh, and chart, chart everything that we're doing. So I think it's, uh, it's at about the pace we, uh, we anticipate. Right. You've got a lot of underclassmen that are going to be in the rotation in some capacity with defensive tackle. I know reps are what you want to see out of them, but what do you want to see in those reps that will ultimately decide the, the snap counts and, and who's out there for a four? Yeah, when, you know, losing Jeffrey and Braxton and, and the three primary backups, that makes that uh, position one where you know, we've got to, we've got to reload in a hurry. And, uh, you know, with some of the older guys who, who maybe didn't have a primary role last year, you know, Kendall and, uh, and Lee, and then moving James Jackson over, and then all, all the young guys, uh, you know, I think uh, they, they just need a ton of reps. And, and, you know, inside of those reps, just the physicality of the position, you know, the ability to play to run in the pass, you know, uh, and I think Coach Adams is doing a nice job. Paul? <clears throat> Along those same lines, I know every every meeting room has that bell cow, has that leader. Is anybody step forward in that room? Because obviously Lee had been in a leadership role, and then other guys are pretty much red shirt first. Well, I'd say in a certain sense it's probably by committee, you know, and uh, that's one of the things that we've talked about with the guys that uh, you know don't necessarily have to have a C on, on your jersey to be a captain. You know, I think some of the other guys in, on that defense side of the ball have picked up the slack from that perspective. But I, I'd say of, of everyone, you know, he's probably the, the, the guy that the, the, uh, kids are taking their cues from. Going back to the, the quarterbacks, you say you chart every, or every throw that they make. Yeah. How easy is it to sort of you know, distinguish between guys when you're just seeing them throw in practice? It's like, how much will these scrimmages really help you determine, you know, who, who's going to be the guy? Yeah, I think the uh, the scrimmage performance plays a role, but not necessarily. Uh, it's not the uh, only measuring stick. You know, it's, it's it's completion percentage, it's touchdown to interception ratio, it's explosive plays created. Uh, you know, it's how the team's rallying around you. So, the, so there's a bunch of different things. And, you know. Uh, Certainly, the scrimmage will play a big part in it, but it, it really what you want is their body of work to paint the picture. And just, you know, like we talked about our ability to create, uh, improve, our, improve our pass game with a respect to efficiency, explosiveness, while still uh, protecting the football and uh, getting the confidence of your teammates. And, um, you know, ultimately, like I said, they're both showing that they can run the ball capably. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to which, two, which of those two throw the ball best. Thoughts on your freshman class? Uh, very excited about them. I think, uh, you know, like anything, the, um, the first few days of exposure to SEC West football was a little bit eye-opening, and, and not just the, the speed and physicality of the game, but the I say relative complexity to the, to the installations and how they stack on top of each other and taking the information from the meeting room and applying that on the field. But I think from a pure physical standpoint that, uh, that what we believe in the process, you know, uh, I think we got bigger, I think we got uh, stronger, I think we got more athletic and explosive, and now it's a matter of getting adjusted to the speed of the game. How would you describe a Michael Johnson wide receiver, and what kind of identity do you expect out of that group? Describe Michael as a coach? Well, his identity as a, as a coach and what you see out of yeah, this. Yeah, the first thing, uh, two, the two words I, I would think of Michael are, are knowledge and positivity. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the guy have a, have a bad day. Uh, and when you've got experience, uh, you know, as a player and as a coach, 
the collegiate level and in the NFL. You know, God coach Michael Vick, God coach, you know, all, all those great receivers with the with the, the Ravens and other places. I think it brings us the credibility to the room. And uh, you know, I think you know the adage that they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think Michael's done a real good job from a personal relationship with, relationships with the guys and you know when that occurs they're uh, you know willing to you know, go to bat for you and I, I think uh, you've seen a, a, a more mature mature group. Coach, you talked about obviously having to hire a number of new staff yeah. this week, but uh, between Tony and Marcus and Joe, you've got a number of guys with former head coaching experience on your staff as yeah. well. How much does that maybe help you as a, as a second year head coach at the SEC level and maybe you know, working through the, the early on? Yeah. yeah, and uh, Coach Browner and Coach Shoot, you know, they've been at head coaches prior as well, so I think. Uh, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to bounce ideas off people who sat in that chair, because there's really not a manual for it. You know, you can prepare for being an assistant coach, you can prepare for being a coordinator, and do your best to, to uh, make all the necessary, uh, you know, kind of put the plan in place, so to speak. But, but there's things that pop up, and you know, you may have an idea of how you want to do it, and you know, ask one of those guys who have done it. So they, 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 they've all been great resources. talent that you lost on defense. How do you keep the defense up to that standard that was kind of set last year? Yeah, I think uh, Coach Hoop and his staff have done a, you know, <clears throat> a nice job kind of acknowledging the, the fact that we lost a lot of talent, certainly a lot of production, uh, but at the same time, uh, not lowering the expectation level of the standard which we want to perform. Uh, you know, I think, you know, across the board, you look at the different positions, I think, you know, it's kind of a little bit different from you know, the linebacker you bring both the guys back, you know, two of the top guys, you know, in the country. Uh, in other positions, it's talent that requires experience. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, you know, the, the base kind of foundation of, of our scheme remains the same. The coach has done a good job, but, you know, off-season studies and things are done week and install. So it's not about, in a certain respect, it's not about plays, it's about players. And you, you still want to hold true to, 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 uh, to your system, but at the same time, not ask kids to do things they're not capable of doing. So, so within the scheme, there's enough flexibility that you know you lose all those linemen. You know that all right, this is what we're going to do up front or, or on the second level to try to you know kind of mitigate some of those departures. I've got a couple questions about Chris Marv in terms of animation and energy <laughs> level. Where, where does he rank among assistants that you've had or, or any coaches that you've been around? Where does the energizer player rank? Yeah. Is, there, is that a ten? Yeah. So he's a 10. Uh, he, he, I, I, I don't know if he still has any eligibility left or hopes of going to the next level, but you, know, you watch him coach the kids an individual, and you know, he's drenched with sweat by period two, and, uh, and I, I think the, the kids in that room have really adapted his personality, his coaching style, and uh, you know, he's certainly uh, you know, kind of like you know, Michael, very positive guy, you know, pushes the kids, but at the same time, you know, he's done a good job kind of uh, Working with those people as well, and beyond just energy and, and what he brings in that aspect, what has he brought as you know just a football coach? How knowledgeable has he been, and how helpful has he been? Yeah, I think he's a, he, I think he's a tenacious and, and tremendous recruit. I think he does a good job there. Really works hard in that aspect. But I think I mentioned it before. He kind of you do it for enough time, and you know, year twenty one coming up, you get a sense of, of people. We have an opportunity to become you know, coordinators or future head coaches. And I, I think Chris is one of those guys. And, uh, you know, like Michael, instant credibility, he haven't played you know, four years in the SEC and been an all conference performer. But he's very intelligent. He communicates well. He has great passion. And, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, obviously his relationship with Coach Shoot. So all, all those things have added, added up to, you know, I think, a, a real slam dunk guy. You got several guys who play here, right? In this town, or five minutes up the road in West Point, or something like that. How unique is that as a coach to have several guys who play such a key part of your team? Basically, grew up right here, and have you, amongst Willie and, and Marcus and some of those local guys, have you sensed any kind of uh, just pride in playing 
for basically the Golden Triangle area, their, their home, hometown, home area. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, it's very, very few players to high school level have an opportunity to play Division One football, even less in the SEC, even less in the SEC West, and even less for the team that, you know, they grew up rooting for. And, uh, you know, for those guys to be able to stay at home in front of family and friends and have them you know, share the experience of their, of their college football journey and, uh, you know, show other kids, you know, you know, around the area, around the state that, you know, have to go anywhere to achieve all your goals and all your dreams. I think that, that that's what makes it special for those guys. You know, to, to have a, a parent text me and say, hey, is this going to jump into families and, you know, to know that there's going to be people here from all, all, all uh, you know, around the area to support them. I think that makes it good for the guys. Okay, so you have a group of guys that like to dance. What are your thoughts on that, and do you ever join them? <laughs> <laughs> once I did, but once I didn't have it. Uh, you could ask them that. Um, yeah, uh, Desert, pretty good. Tommy Champion, Michael Story, Buncher Adams jumped up the other day. Uh, the kids seemed to want Purge, uh, so Purge jumped up there, and kind of we started off every team meeting off with music and let them select it, and I usually don't get started until. You know, one of the guys jumps up there and gets going. So it's, it was entertaining. When Fletcher got up there yesterday, the, 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 the room went nuts. All the kids got out, got the little things out. So uh, it was it was good. It's all it's always fun to start to meet with that kind of energy. Doug, you get a mic? Yeah. Any update on uh, Kareem yet? No update is, no update yet. Uh, we're waiting, we're hammering away, and we're exhausting all the possibilities, and so I promise you as soon as we know y'all are done. Thank you. Thank you. He just has some, some, some things he got to take care of. It's kind of on that front, you know, waving too? Sorry? On that front, cordless waving and anything? Yeah, same. No. Uh, I, I don't want to answer. Yeah. Just the status on Willie Gay and if he'll be available for the scrimmage today? He'll be he'll be out tonight. We anticipate it on next week. And then just going off uh, back to the freshman, um, who are some of the guys that have stood out to you and have a realistic chance of playing time in the fall? I think Schrader's made some really nice drives. I mean, technically he was a big year, but you know he's really he's uh, stepped up his game the past few practices and done a nice job. You know, Lee Whitstrom's getting a bunch of rushes running back, trying to go through positionally. Uh, no tight ends. Uh, Nick Penley, you know, he, he stood out with, with his motor and his physicality. Uh, you know, Nathan, Devontae, Jack, I mean, it, it, Martin, Jarion, you know, list the whole, at, at different times it's, it's different guys stepping up, but their reps right now are kind of limited because of, of, of depth and, you know, getting used to the, the speed of the game, but you know, during the course of seven practices, they've all kind of had their moments. I apologize to any of them if I miss their name. Come see me later. <laughs> Um, you have several players on your roster that are from community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. Um, kind of how important is that in the development of young players in the state, and how does that contribute to the development of the program here at Mississippi State? Yeah, I um, had limited amounts of experience recruiting junior colleges you know, prior to coming to Mississippi State, but. I think it's an invaluable resource for us where, where kids, and the, the thing that I've seen that's been the most interesting is, you know, kid in state will maybe have an FCS or, or a group of five offer that will kind of, you know, bypass that to go to junior college because they have hopes and aspirations of playing FBS or playing in the SEC. So to have so many in the state that are producing great players and are so very well coached, and uh, what it does is allows you to kind of from a roster management standpoint, if there's a hole or a void left in one of the classes, to step in and fill with the guy that can play immediately. And, uh, and I, think, I think we've been able to do that uh, fairly well so far, and we'll continue to do that in the future. Questions? 